Hey everybody, surprise, I'm on Facebook Live. Um, I decided to do a challenge where I do a 30 day Facebook Live challenge. What does that mean? Um, I'm gonna get on here every day for 30 days, even if it's just for like three or five minutes um, and try to like show you guys something or talk to you about something. And uh, today I decided to kick it off by painting a door hanger. We're gonna paint it kind of like a flag, but it's the United States. And uh, this was one somebody ordered from me. They want it to say Land of the Free. Oh, okay. So as you're coming on here, say hello. I'm going to try to get my video going on my husband's iPad here so I can see your comments coming in, hopefully. So as you're coming on, say hi. Tell me where you're from. Okay, there we go. I think I've got it up and going. Somebody say hello. I see, I see it says Andrea Fulcher is watching. Hey, Andrea. So feel free to tell me hi. Hi, Becky from Louisville. Okay, so I got a few people on here. It's working. Anyways, so if you missed it, I was telling everybody that I'm starting my a 30-day Facebook Live challenge. So I'm going to get on here every day for just a few minutes and like either show you guys something or just kind of talk about what what's on my mind. And um, today I decided to kick it off by painting a door hanger. I'm going to be painting the United States and we're going to be painting it like a flag which is pretty simple. I've already gotten like a little square drawn up here in the corner. I'm gonna paint that part blue. So I'm gonna start by just painting the whole rest of the area white. Hello, Tammy. Hello, Allison. Thank you for saying hi. What are you guys up to today? Did you go to church? Have you been out to eat? What have you been doing? We went to church this morning and then we've just come home and I'm just trying to get some orders done. And I've already decided, too, that um, on, I guess it's August the 17th, if you haven't heard about it yet, there's supposed to be a full solar eclipse across the entire United States. I'm sure you've heard about it. It's all anybody's talking about. And uh, so I thought, well, on that day, I could go outside and kind of film the eclipse because it is supposed to go directly over our area. So it'll be complete darkness for, I think they set up to like two and a half minutes. It's a really big deal, so... I think it's even like this area it's supposed to be like the longest amount of time that it'll stay dark like or actually over in Hopkinsville I think Hopkinsville Kentucky it's supposed to be the biggest they even built a hotel in preparation for this event it's kind of silly I think but I guess they're expecting a lot of tourists to come and watch the eclipse or something so if the eclipse is gonna be passing through your area tell me let me know I'd be interested to see who all is gonna get to see it not seeing any comments coming up so I'm not sure if it's delayed or not working or what but I'm just gonna keep painting here I'm covering the whole thing in white so this is not the fun part to watch necessarily and if you notice I'm just squirting it directly on the door hanger because that's just when I'm covering a big area that's just the easiest thing to do I just squirt it on there smear it out and then I try to smooth it that way it's not got streaks and stuff and I had someone comment on, I don't know if you guys saw yesterday, I posted um, uh, a picture of two snowmen. One of them was the first snowman, snowman I ever painted, and the other one was one that I painted like back in December. Actually, it was the first door hanger I ever painted, not just the first snowman. And so I was kind of showing you like how much I've grown over the past couple of years. And so, uh, anyways, somebody commented on that and asked how I got my white paint so smooth. And um, this is kind of, it's kind of hard to get it smooth whenever you're on your second coat because I don't know if the white's just a little thicker than other paints or what it is, but it like gets gunked up and it won't smooth out really well. I got an itch. <laughs> I'm going to scratch that with my paintbrush. And so um, on the second coat, I usually like get my brush wet. That way it will smooth out any imperfections and it kind of makes the paint go on a little thinner. Okay, Becky says, how do I know when I should paint white first? I know under yellow, but what other colors? Okay, it kind of just depends on your paint and how, um, like how bright you want it to be. So like if you're using yellow, orange, or red, those three colors, they're warm colors, and they are kind of uh, transparent. So if you're wanting like a really rich, bright yellow, like say on a beach ball, or a really, really, really bright red, then you might want to paint white underneath it. Honestly, I only ever paint white underneath yellow. 
just if it's gonna be like a bright yellow. If it's like a sunflower yellow, um, sometimes I don't even paint white underneath that. So um, that's just kind of what I do. Okay, while this white is drying, I wanna go ahead and do the blue in this little area. And I'm using cobalt hue. It's like a real bright blue. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. I'm just gonna squirt it right on there. I'm gonna start by just doing the edges. That way I can go ahead and just smear it out and not worry about getting outside the lines. And your line does not have to be perfectly straight. Your square does not, or your rectangle, I guess it's not really a square, does not have to be perfectly rectangular. It just, because once we have all the other stuff going on on here, you're not going to notice if the lines are perfectly straight or whatever. Right. Not to mention the shape you're painting on is not a square, so it doesn't have to be perfectly square. And as usual, I'm painting my edges. So I just think it makes it look better when you're done to have all the edges painted. I had one, but I thought there was like three or four. If you can hear my husband, he's playing uh -huh. Xbox with a friend and they're talking to each other while they're playing. <laughs> I put Charlie down for a nap, but you might be able to hear her too. She's hollering mama. She's refusing to go down for a nap. But no, it I'm could be her brother's fault because they're supposed to be cleaning the playroom. And they can't do that quietly, apparently. They wind up playing cops and robbers or something and running through the house, so... All right, we got the blue covered, and let's see. I've got a hair dryer over here, but I don't really want to have to get it out. I may go ahead and just, even though the white's a little wet, get my brush nice and wet. It helps if your water's clean. Mine's not so clean. We'll try it anyway. It's got some blue streak through it, but I think it's gonna be all right. So I've got my brush nice and wet. And I'm just smearing on a second coat of this white. And the reason, if you missed it before, the reason my brush is wet is to help the paint go on smoother on the second coat. Also, since I'm doing this 30-day uh, Facebook Live challenge, if you guys have any ideas for stuff I could do, like what you're wanting to learn or know about, um, that'll give me some ideas of what I could do. Maybe I could do like a bow tutorial one day. Or um, I could try to do a lettering tutorial. I've never really taught hand lettering though, but um, it's just kind of one of those things you gotta practice. Practice makes perfect. Whoop, I smeared right through that blue. It's all right. We're gonna put some red stripes on here in a few minutes, so um, it won't show anyway. I forgot I gotta get my brush wet. I was wondering why it was kind of dragging. If your brush feels like it's dragging real bad and it's not smoothing the paint out, wetting your brush will help. So what's everybody doing right now? You just hanging out at home, resting, enjoying this beautiful Sunday afternoon. We actually finally got some rain this morning. We could use some more. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> Alright, I got all the white colored and I'm gonna take a break real quick and hair dry this. So if you guys can hold your horses for just a second. dry the blue is pretty dry but I'm seeing that the blue may need another coat so I'm gonna do another coat on it real quick before we start on the stripes 
Hello, Tina. Hello, Sarah from Mississippi. She says she's been making door hangers herself thanks to my instructions. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you are trying uh, to make them yourself because it's a lot of fun. They make great gifts. Just out of curiosity, Sarah, have you been uh, cutting them out yourself or, or have you um, had somebody else cut them out for you? I'm kind of trying to encourage everybody to like learn how to use a jigsaw because it's not as hard as it seems. It's just one of those things that's kind of intimidating if you're not I'm used to using straight. power tools. Shh! <laughs> Tell my husband to hush. But anyways, um, yeah, jigsaw is not as scary as it looks. I just finally learned how to use a circular saw the other day for, well, about a month ago for the first time. I'd never done that before. Don't die. I haven't cut my arm off yeah. yet, so... <laughs> okay, we got the blue covered. Yes, you're cutting them yourself. That's awesome. Said so you have no artistic ability, but you've been impressing yourself, and you will continue to impress yourself if you continue to like uh, step out of your comfort zone and um, try it. You know, like I had a, somebody ask me if I could paint. I don't know if it was Superman or something on a door hanger. I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> But I ended up coming up with a technique where I traced like the outline of his body and then painted him and he turned out pretty good. Hang on, I need a pencil. There's one right here. So, you will surprise yourself. Okay, um, I'm just using a yardstick and I'm not going to... Can you see that? I'm like... Shh! Ain't nobody coming Michael! Y'all tell him to be quiet. Can you hear me? He's got a set of headphones on. I don't think he can even hear me. But anyways, okay, I'm going to use my yardstick, but I'm not going to um, use the width well, of the yardstick I because to I'm going to trace them just a little wider than the yardstick. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring between. I'm just kind of leaving the same amount of a gap each time. And since that blue is wet, I don't want to, well, I guess it won't hurt if I lay my yardstick on it. I just have to not wiggle it around a lot. I mean, how much leeway... Well, I done? said it wouldn't matter, but I just totally gummed that up by getting white on it. Oh, yes. I must have had white on my yard stick. Okay, it'll go up with blue. Okay, back to it. All right, we got our stripes drawn. And by making your stripes Boy, a little wider, you kind of... Pretty quickly. Michael Bennett! Michael! Hello! He don't even hear me, y'all. Does anybody else have a husband that plays Xbox? It's kind of nerve-wracking. It's like having a teenager in the house. He's got a set of headphones on, and he's playing with his friends, and he can't, he doesn't even realize how loud he's being. So, I apologize on his behalf. All right, you back? All right. <laughs> You've already made a mason jar for your sister-in-law. She loved it. Awesome. That's great. What'd you put on your mason jar? Okay, so by making the stripes a little wider, you're kind of doing here. yourself Look, a favor. Up on top of the thing, <laughs> Doing yourself a favor um, because you're not going to have to paint as many stripes. And if painting on a line, like, wigs you out, you can use painter's tape. I've tried it before, I, but to be honest, I spend more time taping it off than I would if I just drew the, you know, drew the line and then painted on it, so. If your hand's really shaky, like I know um, I've had some women in some of my paint classes say they have problems with their hands shaking, then using painter's tape works really good. And I recommend uh, frog tape instead of just the blue painter's tape. It's the frog tape She's is green lot, and it uh, has like an edge blood. lock or something like that. So the paint won't get underneath as bad. And uh, that would make painting the stripes a little easier for you if you've got a shaky hand. All right, got the part, bottom part done. So far, Tina says she's painted sunglasses, the Grinch, the turkey that she ordered from me. Awesome. Well, Tina ordered some done. blank cutouts from me. Um, so if you want some blank door hangers to paint yourself, they're um, usually about $15 each. Uh, unless it is one that has to be cut using the CNC machine, those are a little bit more. But you can also find those on my website. Under There's actually a section in my shop called Blank Door Hangers. And you can find them in there and just order as many as you want. They're, um, it's www.southernadormentsdecor.com. And don't forget, adornments has two O's in it, like door. <laughs> so, as you're coming on, say hello. 
Tell me what you're up to this Sunday afternoon. I'm painting not so straight lines, but it's okay. We are not perfectionists. We are go with the flow kind of people, or I am. My dad's a perfectionist. Sometimes you just gotta let it go and have fun with it. Did you ever pile all your stuff? Fall will be here before we know it, so maybe um, I can get on here sometime in the next 30 days during my challenge and paint some a couple of fall door hangers for you guys. I feel like I've blinked and suddenly August is here, so fall will be here pretty soon, hopefully, because it's been kind of hot. Hey, Dale! The work in security and bored thought you would watch. <laughs> well, hopefully I can entertain right. you. Uh, um, I miss you. Uh, Kelly, you've always used a bigger brush for the bigger area. You've always used a bigger brush for the bigger area. Does a small brush leave paint lines or does it go on pretty smooth? This is, um, this brush is probably about a half inch what wide. It doesn't leave there? streaks real bad. If I was having to cover the whole area with a real skinny brush, it would leave a lot of streaks and it would be very frustrating because it would take forever. I like this half inch brush to cover areas like this, especially if I'm trying to get a nice crisp line. I have some fatter brushes that are like an inch or maybe an inch and a quarter wide, but sometimes when I use those bigger brushes, it's hard to control the paint and keep it from just going all over the place. So I like this one because the brush bristles are nice and smooth and it um, allows me to get a nice clean line. You're welcome. Well, if you love my videos, I'm planning on doing this Facebook 30 day live challenge. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna plan on getting on here every day for just a few minutes and painting or talking about whatever's on my mind or whatever. So if you've got any ideas or suggestions about what I could do in my Facebook live challenge, I'm sure after a few days, I'm gonna run out of ideas. So who knows, maybe one night I'll just show you what I'm cooking. I feel like I've painted this one on Facebook Live before, but maybe I haven't. I don't know. Y'all tell me if I have. I apologize if I have, but this was one somebody had ordered on my website, and I was going to be painting it this afternoon anyway, so I thought I would film it. I'm having deja vu, so maybe that's why I feel like I've painted it before. I did try to paint it in a time-lapse video one time, and uh, it cut off right before I did the lettering. And I'm like, well, they're not gonna wanna watch that then because there's no lettering. I'm gonna flip it around so I'm not getting my arm in the red paint. Becky says more flowers. Sarah says definitely fall and Christmas stuff. Alrighty. Uh, fall and Christmas is my busiest season, so I'm looking forward to it. Everybody likes to paint stuff for the holidays. Someone at one of my paint parties the other day was talking and said that um, their girls, like their daughters, wanted to get together and instead of exchanging gifts, um, to do a paint party. And just kind of make it more about the experience than the gift giving. I thought that was a really great idea. Uh, the red paint I'm using is Apple Barrel Bright Red. So, if you needed to know, Apple Barrel Bright Red, June. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a great idea because... Sometimes buying gifts for everybody can get kind of expensive, but you could all forgo the gifts and get together and do a paint party instead. And if you're not from around here and you want to do a paint party, you know, with your friends or whatever, you could always order the blanks from me and I could ship them to you and you guys could have your own little paint party. Okay, we've got all the stripes drawn or Drop painted. And next, this is like the easiest thing ever. If you've never noticed or never looked, over in like the craft section at Walmart where the paints are, they have these little sponge daughters. And they come in three sizes. The largest is, a ha is one inch, this one's three quarters of an inch, and then they're, 
I'm sorry, the largest is one inch, this one's three quarters, and then the smallest is a half inch. And there, you can just wash them out and reuse them. I'm just gonna dip it right in the white paint and kind of like scrape off the excess. And I'm using my handy dandy um, egg carton. If you've never used an egg carton to hold paints, it's awesome. And just kind of, when you dot, don't just go down. Kind of do like a little half twist whenever you do it and that will make it more of a rounded dot instead of a sponge dot. And I'm just gonna go across here and do my stars and I'm not gonna line them all up perfectly. The second row, I'm gonna kind of place each dot in between the underside of the last one. So if you see that, they're not perfectly in line with one another. And if you feel like you get one that maybe didn't cover as good or has a spot in it or the paint didn't cover, you can always re-dot on top of it. It will not hurt a thing. But this is a lot easier than doing stars. And it's cute, it's kind of whimsical. Are y'all in there laughing at me? No. My kids are in the kitchen, they think they're being funny. No. Okay, we're just gonna do a few like that. And then I'm just gonna like set that aside and I'll wash that out in a few minutes because I'm almost done. Okay, now I'm gonna get a little bit of gray and do like a little accent or highlight inside each of the dots. Sarah says, do you use a base coat or a medium before you paint? No, I just paint directly on top of my door hanger. Um, the only time I put a coat underneath is if I'm wanting a really bright yellow, then I'll do white underneath the yellow because the yellow is kind of transparent. Okay, I'm using granite gray. It's a really, really light gray, and I'm not even sure if you guys will be able to see this in the video, but I'm just going to do like little highlights, kind of like half comma marks almost on each of these little polka dots, and it kind of makes them look three-dimensional. Am I going to head your way? Halfway thought about filming this on the back porch so I could get some solitude. <laughs> Don't have kids and husbands interrupting. Okay, can you see that? That's just a cute way to make them look kind of 3D. Becky says more lettering tips. Okay, I will work on that. All right, next I'm going to get a brush that's about a quarter inch wide. Just because this one holds a nice amount of paint. Let's see if I can get it nice and close. It's shaped kind of like that, so it's kind of rounded on the end. And I'm gonna get some black paint. I need some more black. And then we're just going to, like all these little imperfections around the edges don't matter anymore because see, we're just gonna take this black and do like a cute little wavy line, almost like Rick Rack. If you're, if you're a sewer, you oh, know what Rick Rack is. <laughs> behind you, behind you, behind Shh. you, Corey. I'm sorry. Anyway, oh, I'm down. we got husbands playing Xbox and kids mm. running amok, so this is my life. All right, so we got that, and well, I'm probably going to do a little bit is. around the edge do, up here, too, sure so it's just cuter back. that way. Oh, crap. And then we'll do some, um, this is not going to be quite as wavy. It's just going to be kind of wiggly going around the edge, and that kind of just We're defines not. the shape. When I let her, do I always use yeah. paint or do I use pens? I never use pens. There was a time or two I did in the very beginning when I first started doing door hangers. But um, to me, the effect is a little different. It doesn't look quite the same when you use a pen as when you use paint. So um, I just, I tried it and then I didn't like it. So I ended up using paint. And I'm, every now and then I'm just doing two or three little dots to kind of break up the wavy line. Are you shotgun? Sometimes it's two dots, sometimes it's three dots. And I'm just following the shape of the U.S. Going all the way around. Now, why would I quit? And something else you can do to um, keep your, or like if you're worried that maybe your stripes and stuff aren't, uh, what's the word, straight, then you can get like some white on a pointy brush and just kind of do like this and just create some white streaks, which my, my stripes look pretty good. They're not terribly uneven, but I just kind of like the way it looks with the streaks going through it. And it just kind of 
busies it up a little bit. Okay, last but not least, the words. And I'm gonna use the same brush that I just used to do the wiggly line. I think it's technically called a filbert brush, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's got like a rounded tip. It holds a nice amount of paint so that when you're writing your letters, it doesn't start to run out. And we're just gonna write land of the free. And when you when you do your lettering, kind of push down your brush. I'm gonna see if I can turn this. Woo! My poster board is sliding. Push down and it will fatten out the letter. Oh, oh that's not moving. And don't lift up until you get to the end of the mark. So like all the way down, then lift up. Like that. And I know it's backwards, but it's because you guys are being filmed in selfie mode here. Okay, so we got land. Of. Oh, crap. I'm launching your days. What's it look like? Uh, I have to concentrate or I'll end up spelling something wrong. Free. I died. Don't die. F R E. Okay, we got land of the free. All right, so I think that concludes the door hanger. We're completely done. I just have to make a bow for it, and I'll probably do that later. Thanks for popping in. Um, look for me again tomorrow. I'm not really going to try to do this on a set schedule, like the same time every day, because. My life is too crazy for that. <laughs> I would not be able to pin down the same time every day, but I'm going to just pop in once a day and say hey and kind of show you what I'm up to or talk about whatever's on my mind. So I'll try to include plenty of painting tips and all of that in there and uh, just kind of give you guys more of a taste of what I do every day. And this is pretty much it. I paint almost every single day. So that's the only way you're going to get better. But thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Kathy. That's Somebody sweet. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.